My name is Paulie. Today we are talking about a really cool topic, um, a really challenging and relevant topic to so many men in the world that we live in, and that is self-sabotage. Tom, how are you, my friend? Good, good. Very excited to be talking about this one. I feel like it's uh, it's kind of often overlooked, you know, mm. um, and maybe it goes by many different names as well. You know, um, people talk about the inability to stick to habits. Um, yeah, I mean, it, this, <clears throat> it can even become existential when people start to question who they are as a consequence of not being able to follow through on the things they that they want to do. And when mm. there's that misalignment between how they are on the inside and, and what they do on the outside, it kind of fractures their perception of themselves. So there is a, there is a deep side to self-sabotage, but we probably won't go too far in the trenches today, but I think it's, it's going to be an important topic nonetheless. Without a doubt. And the first thing that for me that comes to, ma to mind is, you know, I've supported so many um, high functioning men in mm. uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to just be in uh, people's uh, worlds and, you know, what I've found is uh, certain men uh, can really uh, achieve heights of heights in certain departments of their lives. And then, uh, you know, they can self-sabotage in other aspects of their lives in a really, really significant way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like the subconscious justification of what they've been able to achieve in certain departments mm. that um, allows them to sabotage um, other departments that they ultimately want to achieve um, the same heights in. Yes, that's a that's a brilliant point. That's um, not something I actually thought about um, for today's show, but it is such a good point. And I think what happens, um, I think this probably happens with women as well, but I've certainly noticed at working with men is that um, they seem to be more interested in being exceptional in one area to the detriment or sacrifice of many others, mm -hmm. where people who are not that way inclined are going to be happy just kind of averaging a nice, you know, a nice level of abundance across multiple domains without being, you know, without having to be the best in one area. And, and that can be, that's unsustainable. You know, if you want to make the most money or be the best in a sport or A, B and C, you know, because, because life is uh, scarce with, with resources and time being obviously a very fundamental resource, you're going to sacrifice in other areas. And, and oftentimes that can lead to uh, negative consequences for friends and family. Definitely. And I think that's what uh, so many high achievers in uh, business have found uh, that they, they get to. I just it was a, I attended a kind of a workshop uh, mastermind so thing uh, yesterday where somebody who uh, was was running it had achieved the heights of heights. And he admittedly said, I've gotten to where I am um, as a young man and father by not being present and available for my family and my kids growing up. Now, as an older man, he acknowledges that and uh, he, he reflects upon it. But uh, I think the uh, the power, the, the key is to be aware enough for you to be able to create balance as you're moving through life and as you're wanting to achieve um, th th this type of uh, prowess or um uh, aspirations in business, but also concurrently in your personal life, um, your personal life with your partner, your personal life with your children, mm -hmm. and most importantly, your personal life within yourself. When you look in the mirror, you can say, I am proud of what I see. I, 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 I identify with who I am. Yes. Yes. And, and I think when you can own, uh, who you are, um, you can inform other people as to who you are and, and what your needs are, you know? And I think, you know, something that, you know, we really want to um, put across to, to, to everyone listening is that there is no right way to be a dude, you know? Mm. And, um, but it's about conveying that to the people who, who love you and, and to yourself. And so, I mean, if you want to be a, a Michael Jordan, you know, in, in basketball or a Leo Tolstoy in writing or whatever it is. That was a very bizarre. <laughs> I'm reading a bit of Tol Tolstoy at the moment. <laughs> well, he, he wrote a couple of big ones. I mean, uh, fun, uh, funnily enough, people think of him as the greatest writer of all time. And one of his books, Anna Karenina, is considered one of probably the greatest novel of all time. But his daily routine and his schedule 
um, not to mention the misogyny. Like one of his rules for life was to avoid women at all costs. And the other <laughs> one was to only attend a brothel twice a month. And he had well, 13 children with his wife. Like, <laughs> let's not be hasty here. Only <laughs> twice a month? Only twice. It was, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, so, but this is my point. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't know much about Tolstoy, but if he owned that and said, hey, look, this is who I am. I, 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 my pursuit is to be the greatest writer who's ever lived. Mm. You're not going to be very good at many other areas, but you could mm. be phenomenal in one area. But, you know, if that's you um, in, in any domain, go for it and just be open and honest with people who love you and support you. But at the same time, I feel like your background, my background, speaking to people out there who do want to be high functioning, you know, some of the blokes who do want to be high functioning in their career and their purpose and their prospects. It doesn't have to mean that you sacrifice being a good father as well to, to use your point. Mm. It, it certainly doesn't. And I think communication um, with your, your loved ones and those around you uh, is a really massive thing. And, you know, I, I think, you know, this is something that I can continue to work on as well. I think everyone probably can, you know, to be able to have open channels of communication for those around you, but also being very, very open with yourself mm -hmm. about how you want to be able to create this path. And I think that's where leading back to the overarching theme of today's discussion, which is about self-sabotage. I feel like we, we can sabotage ourselves when we lose sight of what our ultimate goal is yes um because ego starts to come into play and um if the going gets too tough um the slightest challenge comes up for you with whatever pursuit you want to be able to achieve let's use a health pursuit sure. as an example okay let's just use an arbitrary measure like losing five kilograms yep. okay yeah um let's say, you know, the first couple of kilos come off and then, uh, you know, you start to, you know, as it, as it happens, you start to plateau and uh, you get a little bit of resilient, uh, you know, th th there's a little bit of um, uh, stubbornness when it comes to achieving those, those next steps. This is where a lot of people's ego kind of come into play. They're like, hang on, I'm doing what I was doing just before and mm. um, it's not working. You know what? Maybe this whole thing isn't for me. I'm just going to go back to what I what I was doing, and uh, self sabotage could be a really really powerful kind of uh, mechanism. But being able to override that with um, resilience training, yes. um, not just in the body but in the mind, to be able to overcome that is a really powerful tool. And I'd love to kind of discuss that further, Tom. Let's uh, let's dive deep into how we can kind of override these uh, these mechanisms. Maybe you can use some um, you know experience of your own or those around you that you've helped. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Well, so I mean, look, the first thing I think when it comes to self sabotage, you know, we'll play it out um, using your example. You know, you got a bloke out there and he wants to lose five kilos, and then you know he might come to a, a coaching call or a counselling appointment um, with with um, with us and and say, oh, you know, I've done this before, you know, but I just feel like I have a discipline. Like I'm just lazy. My my first train of thought is always if you've done it before, you don't necessarily have a discipline issue, you know, like, you know, most of the time, how often have you heard this before? I've lost 25 kilos, but I put it back on, you know, mm -hmm. and then therefore I have a self-sabotaging issue. Mm -hmm. And I think what speaks to me most in those examples is not necessarily the fact that you have a self-sabotage issue. It's just that the way you've defined your goals is such that when it stops, you don't have another mountain to climb. Mm. You know, in other words, you got to the top of Mount Everest mm. and and then you didn't set yourself, you know, like see, oh, there's, a, there's a quote that I love is that, um, I'll, I'll butcher it, but um, <laughs> for successful people, the top of a mountain is the beginning of a new one. Yes. You know? And yes. that it has to be like that in life. Yes. And you Absolutely. might think, well, I just, I just got there. So then your identity has to change to something that Paulie and I speak about all the time is that you have to become movement. You have to become mm. exercise. Mm. It's not something that you do. It's an art form. It's a way you express yourself in this life so that mm. it becomes natural for you to be the person living healthily, as opposed to having a definitive goal to move five kilos off and then you're done, you know? Yeah. Beautifully said. And uh, that's why, 
the power of goals, uh, long-term, medium-term uh, goals are so uh, are so um, great to be able to chart out, but um, then being able to identify the individual habits that and processes that you are going to be able to activate on a daily basis mm. that are going to transition your identity into somebody that becomes health, that yes. becomes uh, an athlete to be able to pursue these goals are, are going to be so important. So mm. fall in love with the process, not the goals, is going to be the secret to how self-sabotage is going to be overridden. Yes. You are just, you, you're going to um, wake up every day and expect to walk your 10 kilometers, to take walking meetings, to be able to inject aspects of your day um, movement into your day where you didn't realize it existed to be able to prepare your own food as opposed to eating out twice a day which you'll be baffled by how many people actually do that yes. it does happen yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well I mean it, it's you know it, and and I think um, you know beyond weight loss as well if you want to be a more present father with your kids you know be selfish find a way that you enjoy interacting with your kids. You know, mm. it's like, oh, I've just, I've got no time for my kids. I mean, if you think about, so so on average, people spend 116 minutes a day on social media. Mm. Now, where did that, where did those 116 minutes come from? Because everyone was busy 10, 20, 30 years ago before social media even existed, but you make time for the things yeah. that unfortunately are either addictive or the things that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make time for it and you're gonna be present by definition. So find something that you enjoy interacting with your kids. You know, now there's obviously going to be times where you've got to take them to a recital or a, a game or whatever it is, you know, um, and it's like, yeah, you got to be a dad here. All good, all good, you know. Um, but if you can tailor it so that it's really interesting for you as well, mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you can be so, so lucky, it won't be a chore, you know. And to, to your point as well, losing weight, it's like, oh, I've got to go to the gym again if you hate going to the gym but you used to dance as a kid dance dance baby mm, dance ba <laughs> just dance baby just dance uh, and you're spot on find something you enjoy tap into what activates what makes you you mm. i mean uh, there is no um you know pre-paved uh blueprint that is going to be um, r really uh, applicable to every single human on this earth. You know, there are commonalities that certain people, um, you know, kind of uh, can tap into that, that are going to get uh, and elicit certain feelings out of certain people. Sure. But it's really up to you as to what your background is, what your human experience is that is going to be able to give you that fire to be able to pursue either physical or mental uh, health pursuits. And, you know, uh, for me personally, uh, I think it's always great to use examples. Like for mm. me, um, I've decided to start um, doing pottery again. It's something that I oh, amazing. It's something that I stopped uh, a, a while back, um, and, and I've kind of like uh, dabbled with uh, over the last few years. But I, I'm going to make that a regular part of, um, you know my creative expression and my creative mm -hmm. release. And I know that's something that I need to be able to fully immerse myself in who I am. And I know you have some creative pursuits that you um, ha have formatively become you do that because I feel like that kind of lends um, itself. It builds your identity currently and it lends itself. It gives you joy mm -hmm. and that joy is going to be able to express itself in other aspects in your life, through parenting, mm -hmm. through relating to your peers, through relating to your partner, that is going to give you, uh, it's going to fill your cup up. And yes. when your cup is filled, then you're going to be able to uh, relate to people and yourself in a much more favorable manner, I would have thought. Yeah. Oh, man, I love that. I totally love that. Um, and I, I think it's so true. And I think for, for a lot of guys out there who, you know, maybe they haven't got a sense of their creative pursuits yet or a passion or a purpose, but they have an ambition, you know, and they, they want to do something more. You know, I think it's important to spend, if you, if you, if you know what it is that you want to do, um, but you're not doing it or you don't know yet, but you know, there, there's something out there, mm. spend time away from things that numb you, mm. um, surround yourself with good people who can give you honest feedback as well 
who can show you, you know, you pull yourself out of the lay out of the jar so you can read the label. This is mm-hmm. what you like from the outside. It's like, oh, okay. So you seem, I seem most lit up when I talk about this thing or when I'm doing this, you know, mm-hmm. and follow that path because when you can give to yourself and fill your cup up, once you have your thing done, you know, then you can give back to the world and you find that you're just more present because you don't have this thing bugging you all the time. Hey, get this done, get this done, get this done. You know, you presence being present, I think is, is uh, not only just about practicing presence with a mindfulness meditation practice or, or and so forth, but it's also about uh, getting or uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, reconciling the things that take your attention away. Mm. do those and then you, you might not need the meditation practice <laughs> but on yeah yeah you're absolutely right and you know just drawing on the point that you that you mentioned about giving surrounding yourself with people that give you honest feedback um it, it is a really really great uh thing to be able to acknowledge and it, it can be confronting as well but it 100%. develops uh, and you need to be able to trust the the opinions of these people um yes. Uh, but once that happens, the resource that they will offer to you uh, to be able to better you as a person uh, will be significant. It would be tremendous. Have you got any experiences in your own personal life where um, you've been able to apply uh, some of these tools, Tom? Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, just, just to that last point, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting up a lot earlier now, um, which is always... It was always hard for me, I think, because I I grew up, my mum's a night owl. My mum's an insane worker as well, like just Mm. super ambitious with with how she goes about her life and just like a natural born killer, you know, and I always saw that and kind of, for me, I was like, yeah, because I can work at night. I think when when it's anything creative, um, an idea comes to you and you're like, it's 4 a.m. Like, for me, it's writing. So I'm like, I'm going to get the laptop open. Here we go. (laughs) Within context, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So... You know, it's, but for me with responsibilities and so forth and, um, and, um, and, uh, so we have three dogs, we don't have kids yet, but I imagine that when kids come along, you know, just fur compounded. Babies. we have fur babies, that's right. Yes. Um, what I've now found is that getting up earlier and having an hour of reading time and then two hours of writing before the, before the house wakes up, um, just gets my stuff down done so I can be present throughout the day. And then I don't feel like I'm losing where I am in the book that I'm writing, you know, and then I don't feel like I'm missing out on information from a, from, from a, from a book that I'm reading or whatever it is. And I think I've certainly found in my life that when it comes to self-sabotage for me, it was very much about um, not aligning myself with a, with a sustained goal where by definition, it becomes about enjoying the process. You know, mm-hmm. so I found myself getting injured um, if I was really keen to get my blue belt when I was a white belt in jujitsu, you mm-hmm. know, but only black belts. I mean, this is the beautiful paradox about being goal oriented and being process oriented is that when you're goal oriented, you actually don't get there. When you're process oriented, you get what you started wanting to get in the first place. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so you get it every day. You get it. Well, that's a great point, man. You said it way better than I could then. You get it every day. For black belts on jujitsu, it's about expressing themselves um in the art form of the of the they call it a dance but you know it's obviously a sport moving with other bodies with writing for me it's about the flow i can find getting that perfect word which just blossoms a sentence you know and then i finish the book um as a result you know pottery i can imagine you'd you'd find that kind of flow flow state as well 100 percent. i mean to to use the example of pottery when you're on the wheel and uh, you have this very very wet piece of clay um you need to provide the uh exact push pull tension release mm. between both hands uh you need to be as present as you can possibly be in any um uh situation because if you don't the walls collapse and it turns into a piece of you know um clay that has no no shape whatsoever Mm. so being able to apply this and to be able to create then after to be able to create something out of uh this 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 awareness that you need to inject into it uh is pretty special but the Mm. 
the end result comes from from the process obviously yes. but you need you cannot be thinking about the end result because the second you think about that end result the walls collapse yes yeah i mean i'm picturing uh coming up behind you like that scene from ghost and just uh have yeah <laughs> maybe that's we, not we, ghost. We, we, no it, it is, is it ghost? it is ghost but it's a uh, dancing i can't remember thinking. No, no, it was it was ghost <laughs> okay. and, and it was swayze it was swayze yes we can recreate that yeah uh, a video podcast if you would like we'll do yeah. a video podcast for it a video but well we're, we're we're always doing video podcasts are these these are always going to these be are all video. these are all video yeah we might have to put uh some explicit uh warnings on before if we're doing that scene <laughs> absolutely but we will be both be wearing uh denim yes. and we'll, we'll be do- topless who, who will be right. Demi Moore and who will be uh well I mean uh you know we'll have to we might have to flip, flip a coin <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um so yeah, for sure but 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 just to let everybody know that we are um having a uh video podcast for every single one of these so yes. they'll be on yes. i believe both of our youtube channels yes yes exactly well look i mean so so however you 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 know you see yourself with where your goals are what your goals are you know i think when it comes to self sabotage Think about how the goals you've created yourself relate to your ability to move into being process oriented. Mm. Are they very definitive? You know, I think smart goals are very good because they give you a deadline and, you know, people often find that without deadlines, things just don't occur. And I I certainly resonate with that. I I give myself deadlines for books, um, but what's coming after that, Mm -hmm. you know, like if I want to finish this book by then for me, writing is actually a life source. Like I actually can, can see how my mental health uh, goes up and down in response to the frequency of my writing, not necessarily the quality, but the frequency of it. Yeah. You know? And I think it's, it's really important to just whatever, whatever thing you do, you know, planting flowers, pottery, you know, anything, cooking, you know, um, yep. be selfish enough to give yourself that time. And then ensure that you have something after that, another mountain to climb, you know, mm. What do you think it is about writing that gives you that life source that gives you that mental health um, uh, ability to, to nourish yourself mentally? Well, I think in part, it's my, my upbringing. I mean, my dad's a writer. He's published uh, two books. He was a political journalist and now he's an editor of a magazine. Um, So, you know, I saw him writing from a very young age um, and I just fell in love with it. You know, seeing my dad's, slave behind a computer he was obviously fulfilling him um he's also done a lot of ghost writing for some, some pretty um um public names out there um and just seeing him getting after it every day you know he was writing a book in in the second house i grew up in and he was six hours a day just going for it constantly you wow. know and as a child you kind of see your uh your your father doing that and obviously what i said before about my mum too and you just attribute that to good <laughs> you know success yeah um, role, think, model. role modeling absolutely yeah and i think when you um as a child you're always after your parents validation for sure and walking in their footsteps you know um you know ensuring that it's not forced obviously um feels good to you you know mm. and and i think so there's that side of it as well writing about my own experiences in 2014 i was keeping a diary um it became, it, it started as a need because it was something that was really helping my OCD at the time. Mm. And it became a real love. You know, I could found, I found a way to express myself. I was able to give my voice coherent sentence structures were, were just a wonderful challenge. And I was like, that's mm. the word I'm looking after, not that word. And then when it flows, you're sitting there and you're almost in this state where you're watching yourself write, you know, and it's just, it's happening for you and you feel very much aligned with the flow of the universe, like a wave in an ocean. So it's, um, I think there's a lot of childhood. Uh, There's, there's probably a little bit of nature and nurture associated with it. Yeah. I love that. And, um, you know, it's great to get a little bit of an insight into your background and why writing is so powerful for you. And, um, you know, I, I tend to feel that, um, when, whenever any of us can, can really put pen to paper, uh, and just get what's inside here out onto a piece of paper or onto a computer or whatever it might be. And it doesn't need to be published. It doesn't need to be publicized in any way, shape or form, but the act of writing, the act of journaling just gives you that, that those aspects of clarity, you know, it, it, it just, 
takes an additional step that uh, I feel can create that clarity of what, what what's it can sometimes excavate what's going on inside of your heart and kind of untangle it as well. Yes. That's why, you know, people are harping on about journaling so much to be able to do that and just express yourself. And if you feel like, you know, you don't, you don't want to even keep it, you can throw it in the bin, you can burn it, but just r- go through the exercise of potentially writing mm-hmm. for a consistent period of time. And you might find that you'll, uh, you like what you see, not, yeah on paper, but within you. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I I found in the clinic that oftentimes people who can't move on from traumatic experiences, um, you know, it's not, it's not that they don't want to, it's they actually don't have the words that accurately express the emotions that arose in response to those events. And when you give yourself those words, you give yourself the time, pen to paper, which is basically just thinking with your hand, isn't it? Mm. And you go bang, bang, bang. The reason why words are so important is because fundamentally that's how human beings share their maps with each other. And you say, this is exactly what I went through. You know exactly how I felt in that moment and what I'm feeling now. And then we can start to relate, then you can help me and then I can grow. So I, that's why I feel words are probably one of the most important things. You can also express yourself with with other creative forms. I just found that words for me um, was what got me, me through those times. Yes, it certainly does. And words are constructed with language and we have self-talk, which is also constructed with language. So we, if we exercise this, this, this tool of language on a piece of paper um, or whatever it might be, um, and, and we do this regularly, then all of a sudden when we do have these uh, moments where we talk to ourselves, which is all the time, yes. um, perhaps we become more uh, skilled at being able to uh, decipher what it is that we're, we're talking about when we're talking yep. to ourselves. Yeah. Oh, mate. No, absolutely. Well, Paulie, uh, should we, uh, I think in sum, um, I hope we got a lot out there for, for self-sabotages like, like you and I've been in the past, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, look, I think, and, 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 and I'll, I'll be honest, probably we'll continue to do from time to time. Uh, the self-sabotaging podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the self there you go. That's it. <laughs> exactly. We get it. We get it. <laughs> no, look, um, yeah, as Paulie said throughout the show, um, this is a video, um, podcast as well. You can check it out on both our YouTube channels. Um, and, um, you know, I think you do a really great job of, of, um, of concluding the show every time by saying, if you have a question, if you want us to talk about a particular subject, reach out, you know, we're both active on Instagram. Um, you know, we'll, we respond to the DMs, of course, you know, um, it's a new show that we're very excited about. So we're very community based mm-hmm. and um, we want this to be for you as much as it is for us. Cause it's, we love talking about it, but we also love um, growing something as well. It's going to be beneficial for, for men. 100%. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thanks for the great chat and looking forward to continuing this journey. Beautiful. All right, mate. Talk to you soon. Take care.